I think the Bulls really fumbled the bag here today. This was their opportunity to end the pullback, end the start of what might be a correction, and look to continue the uh, very strong rally that we've had thus far and break what we've had so far as and simply categorize it as a routine pullback, nothing to think about. Unfortunately, we hit the lows of the week today, and we gave up a 1.3% gain. That is definitely fumbling the bag. And I think that's okay. I'm not saying this was a bad thing or a shocking thing in any way. At the end of the day, it is just one day. We don't want to read too much into it. But we said yesterday that this was not a very important CPI report. And it came in just unbelievably marginally better than expectations. I mean, the month on month was the same, whatever. But the headline, I guess, was one-tenth of 1% lower than the median forecast, although there were plenty of forecasts at this number exactly. And here we are. We had a 1.3% rally. That is a lot to celebrate. That is a lot of market cap to celebrate. Particularly, particularly when you're adding that kind of market cap, it's got to be for some sort of major benefit. And the market was already pricing in a Fed pause. That was already the more likely than not scenario going into today was a Fed pause. So is it a slightly better chance of a Fed pause? It certainly doesn't sound that way, despite the market pricing it. Based on what the Fed said today, we heard from two Fed members. I'm, there might have, may have been one more, but I saw headlines from two. Mary Daly, uh, San Francisco Fed. She looks like a straight liberal, but she's trying to play the middle part um, because there's obviously more hawks than doves on the Fed, and there's even female hawks. But, you know, the other person was Bostic, who didn't want to hike. They see where the market's at. They're not trying to shock the market at this moment. Um, but she is saying, not declaring victory, inflation too high, Report came in as expected. Okay, report came in as expected. Saturday we had, and Monday, apparently we had Michelle Bowman talking about how we need additional hikes, plural. We've only had one person, Bostic, say he doesn't want to hike anymore. He's the only one that's come out and say, we are done, I want to pause. However, he said yesterday and also spoke today, saying that, holding rates here until well into 2024 and it's talked about the additional hiking that will come in terms of the real interest rate as inflation continues to fall so even he is not a hundred percent you know trying to be absolutely dovish he is saying no cuts until well into next year presumably around this time so a full year with this kind of federal funds rate with this desire to put cash at the Fed and get this high interest rate. Mary Daly is saying the same thing. No rate cuts for a long time. Not even having that conversation. So, yes, the GDP has been strong. Yes, Atlanta Fed is strong. I don't really know what that's going to be. But my assumption is that we've seen a lot of the positive earning surprises that are going to come. Yes, sentiment was very was very bearish at the beginning of this year around both stocks, earnings, and the economy. Yes, that has certainly surprised in a positive way as interest rates peaked towards the end of last year and there was plenty of Fed hopes multiple times, virtually every meeting, the market consensus is this is it, this is it, we're done. Time to buy the bottom. And yet again, yes, the bottom has been put in, it looks like, at least for now, pending a larger move, then we can reevaluate that question. But uh, the Fed hiking cycle has certainly not ended, at least the multiple times it had in the past, allegedly. As for additional hikes, um, I'm positioning and mentally preparing myself for no additional hikes. 
Uh, I do think there's a reasonable probability that that happens. I also think there's a reasonable pro- reasonable probability that they do hike. My head tells me there's an addition, a uh, slightly harder, or higher probability that they uh, do hike, based on only one person saying they are not continuing to hike, and many others saying that they will continue to hike. The median forecast having projected multiple hikes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they're, they're saying inflation is still too high. Even Bostic inflation is still too high. So he's saying that today, he just happens to think it can continue down without an additional hike, but there are other people who don't. And they've said in the past, they want to err on the side of over tightening. So we'll see. We'll see either way, the, whether or not there's an additional hike, really not that important. It's really not that important. What's far more important are things like the U.S. credit getting downgraded and the effect that has on the 10-year, 10-year treasury. That's had a bigger effect than one additional rate hike would ever have. So there are bigger things. The bond auction that occurred today where the Fed actually had to print money and buy bonds, that's just going to cause them to accelerate the QT a little bit more. Not so good. Sending yields up. Definitely concerning. People questioning the amount of demand that's out there. Obviously, it's one day. It's one auction. But it's not a good sign for those longer-term treasuries. I'm acutely aware to the possible debt issues we can be having. The debt market has had a massive sell-off all of last year. This year hasn't been a great year, despite the strength in equities. The debt market is not looking good. Today was not a good day for that. So I expect this to continue, and I don't think that's going to be good. Interest rates might be going higher. I don't think the Fed is going to try and stop a 10-year going towards 5%. Um, But that will definitely be a massive storm for equities and that was probably a big uh, impact on today's market so we've got a u.s credit downgrade we had moody's not doing that they're the one person i believe that are one of the major three that still has the u.s a triple a but that they did earlier this week downgrade banks which are very in tune with debt valuations so i don't think that's good the bond market is bigger than the stock market. The economy is built on debt. That's a fact. Debt creates spending and it also creates cycles. And I think we are very much turning into the next cycle known as the deleveraging. The other side, there's the leveraging and then there's the deleveraging and then there's the leveraging and then there's the deleveraging. That's what happens. As Ray Dalio says, debt creates cycles. It allows people to consume more than they produce when they get it, when they acquire it and consume less than they produce when they have to pay it back. We've obviously consumed a lot of debt, done a lot of consumption over very many years. Now we are starting to have to pay the debt. We all have to do it. I have a car loan. I'm actively paying that. And it's impeding my ability to consume as much as I otherwise would and could if I could max out my income and money towards spending. Obviously, I don't do that. But it does affect my consumption hypothetically and that is going to perpetrate itself throughout the economy we have student loan payments coming back in as savings savings bank accounts yeah they're higher than pre-covid but they are consistently going down and the higher than pre-covid thing is no longer relevant after we've had some 15 percent increase in prices over the last two years 15 percent is that a fair number to say i mean you know, last month, CPI, you know, in 2022 is 9.1%. We're giving it plus three. You know, you do 3% of that, 109% or whatever. We'll just call it 15%. 15% increase in prices. So if savings are above pre-COVID levels, well, that's going to mean savings are in real terms equal to pre-COVID levels. Then you get a much lower savings rate. And this is all without student loan payments. You bring those back in, you bring the higher interest rates back in, you bring the credit contraction back in, you don't have such a good picture. Okay? That's my take on it. So that's today's video. I think we're going to start 
going towards and focusing on those set the, the things we talked about in the second half of this video in the remainder of the year and less so worrying about one more Fed rate hike, whether or not it comes, because it's not going to have any impact. The Obviously, the uh, rating downgrade and today's bond auction are much more important to interest rates than one more Fed funds short end of the curve rate hike. So that's today's video. Until next time, peace out.